Today's video is an overview of the Spanish conquest of the Inca Empire, which took place in the 16th century. Now, before we start, let us quickly review what we're going to cover during this video lecture. We'll begin with a brief introduction to the Inca civilization. Then, we'll cover the Spanish arrival and the conquest of the Andean region, followed by a look at the role of the conquistador Francisco Pizarro. Then, we'll cover the events that led up to the end of the Inca Empire and the creation of New Castile. We'll also review some of the original sources currently available to us. And finally, we're going to touch on some of the conclusions for this lecture. Again, today's video is an overview of the Spanish conquest of the Inca Empire, which took place between 1528 and August of 1572. So why don't we start by explaining who the Incas were. Now, if you remember, in subunit 1.3.1, we learn about the Amerindian civilizations, which included the Incas. So, just as a quick reminder, the Inca civilization emerged from the Peruvian highlands in the 13th century and thrived until the Spanish conquest in 1533. The Inca civilization was centered in modern Peru. However, by peaceful assimilation and conquest, at its height, the Inca empire also included large parts of Ecuador, Bolivia, Argentina, Chile, and Colombia. It was the largest empire in pre-Columbian America. The capital of the empire was the great city of Cusco, in southeastern Peru. The city was guarded by a large fortress, the colossal Machu Picchu. The Incas achieved many impressive cultural and scientific accomplishments. Still, the pinnacle of Inca civilization were their contributions to engineering and architecture. Even though Spain has been exploring and conquering new territories in the New World since the end of the 15th century, it wasn't until 1522 that Spanish explorers reached the western South America and home of the Incas. This short-lived expedition was commanded by Pascual de Andagoya, who had heard of a great civilization in the land called Biru, or Piru, while exploring the San Juan River. Even though a severe illness forced Anagoya to return to Panama, his report of large amounts of gold and silver prompted a new expedition, this time to be commanded by the Spanish conquistador Francisco Pizarro. Francisco Pizarro was an experienced conquistador who participated in campaigns in New Andalusia, modern-day Colombia and Venezuela, and in Panama. In 1524, while still in Panama, Pizarro heard of the ill-fated Anagoya expedition. Soon thereafter, he convinced another conquistador, Diego Almagro, and a missionary, Hernando de Luque, to launch an expedition to western South America. Pizarro would command the expedition, Almagro would provide the soldiers, while Luque would cover all provisions needed. The three Spaniards were to divide in equal parts all of the riches. 1524 marked a crucial moment in the history of Peru, the launch of the first of three expeditions aimed at conquering the Inca Empire. On September 13, Pizarro left Panama with about a hundred men, but just a few weeks later, after only having reached the coast of Colombia, he was forced to return to Panama due to foul weather. Pizarro and his comrades had to wait in Panama for two years before launching his second expedition. Then, in August of 1526, Pizarro left with just under 200 men. After reaching once again the river San Juan in Colombia, their forces was, had to split due to lack of provisions. Almagro sailed back north to Panama for reinforcements, while pilot Bartolomé Ruiz sailed south in search of evidence of the existence of the Inca Empire, and Pizarro stayed with most of the men to explore the local area. In the south, Bartolomé Ruiz found several natives on the banks of the River Tumbes in northern Peru. The Indians were carrying gold and silver with them, as well as many precious stones. Ruiz captured the natives and returned to San Juan to meet with Pizarro. As soon as Almagargo returned with reinforcements, the Spaniards sailed back to Tumbes, where Ruiz had captured the natives. However, in 1528, after two years of exploring the territory, and by this stage outnumbered and running low on victuals, Pizarro decided to return to Panama to prepare for a third and final expedition. Finally, 
In 1529, after having to travel to Spain to convince the king personally of the benefits of conquering the Inca Empire, Pizarro and his associates were granted permission to launch a third expedition to Peru. Preparations for such a large endeavor took over a year, and the expedition finally took sail in 1532. Pizarro's first stop was Tumbes, the same destination of the second expedition. However, Tumbes had been raged by civil war within the Inca Empire. It was near Tumbes that Pizarro decided to create the first Spanish settlement in Peru, San Miguel de Piura. While building the colony, Pizarro dispatched one of his soldiers, Hernando de Soto, to bear an introductory letter of friendship to the Inca ruler Atahualpa. In the meantime, King Atahualpa had been informed of the arrival of the conquistadors to the northern borders of his empire. Even though at first glance Incas had believed the Spaniards were gods, soon they resolved that they were humans, since they slept, ate, and bled like humans did. Now, not fearing them, Atahualpa accepted Pizarro's offer to meet in the town of Cajamaca in northern Peru. On November 16, 1532, Atahualpa met with Pizarro. Although he had his entire army of 80,000 strong waiting for him outside the town, Atahualpa attended the meeting with just 7,000 unarmed soldiers. Still, the Spaniards were 200 strong, were greatly outnumbered. During their meeting, Atahualpa refused the conquistador's demands. And Atahualpa's refusal led to the Battle of Cajamarca, in which Pizarro massacred Atahualpa's guard and took the king hostage. There are several reasons why just 200 Spaniards were able to defeat the thousands of Incas, but the two most important are the fact that they had artillery, and that once Pizarro had captured Atahualpa, his army surrendered. Once victorious, Atahualpa and Pizarro reached an agreement for his release, which included the payment of a large sum of gold and silver to the Spaniard. But even though Atahualpa's helpers paid the full ransom, he was executed by Pizarro's order on August 29th, 1533. By November of 1533, the Spanish forces had finally invaded Cusco. Now, fearing an uprising, Pizarro crowned Atahualpa's brother, Tupac Hualpa, as a puppet ruler. However, Tupac Hualpa died of smallpox just a few months later. The Spaniards then crowned another of Atahualpa's brothers, Manco Inca Yupanqui, Manco Inca was initially an ally of the Spanish. However, after being openly mistreated, he rebelled. Thus, in 1537, taking advantage of a dispute between Almagro and Pizarro over the spoils of the conquest of Peru, Manco Inca attempted to capture the city of Cusco. And after a year of continuous confrontations, the Incas were defeated. After the Spanish regained control of Cusco, Manco Inca continued but to no avail to launch several attacks against the conquerors from the mountains where he and his few allies hid for several decades. The struggles continued until 1572, when his son, Tupac Amaru, the last member of the Inca dynasty, was assassinated by the Spanish. After 40 years, then, the Inca empire had finally fallen. Similarly, as they had done in Mexico, the Spanish forces destroyed all vestiges of the once powerful Inca Empire. In the capital city, Cusco, Catholic churches were built on top of the Inca temples. Moreover, the Spanish moved the capital to a newly acquired lands to Lima, which Pizarro himself founded in 1535. The Inca Empire became part of the Spanish overseas territories first known as the Viceroyalty of New Castile. And, in 1572, as the Viceroyalty of Peru. There are several contemporary sources describing the Spanish conquest of the Incan Empire. Firstly, we have Hernando Pizarro's letters. Hernando was Francisco Pizarro's brother, and you can read one of his letters translated into English in subunit 2.2. These letters contain a number of interesting observations regarding the geography of the region as well as the religious customs and daily lives of its inhabitants. Still, their value come from the author's description of the Spanish military campaigns and his close relation with their commander. Probably the best and most accurate account of the Spanish conquest of the Inca Empire 
is Pedro de Siestas, Crónicas del Perú. You can read an excerpt in subunit 2.2. This account includes not only fascinating descriptions of the military operations of the Spanish conquistadors, but also detailed materials on the natives and their clothing, housing, food, and other habits. Siesta's work is considered to be the best account of the Andean cultures by an eyewitness. Finally, there's an Inca account of the Spanish conquest of the Inca Empire. As mentioned before, the Spaniards burned most of the Inca records in the process of destroying any remains of their civilization. However, Titu Cusi, a son of the Manco Inca and brother of Tupac Amaru, dictated an Inca history of Pizarro's conquest to a Spanish missionary. The account contains invaluable observations regarding the Inca's cultural practices and their attempts to, of resistance to the European conquest. In conclusion, with a few thousand soldiers, Francisco Pizarro managed to conquer the Inca Empire, which had an approximate population of 12 million. Now, by the end of the century, war, diseases, and Spanish rule had decimated the native Indian population, and by the early 17th century, there were less than 3 million Aztecs. Even though the Spaniards destroyed most of the Inca culture, a few of their traditions and their language, Runasimi, also known as Quechua survives to this day.